Hey everyone, welcome back to the Investing Iguana channel, it's Iggy here. Today, we're diving into a topic that's sparking conversations across Singapore the government's bold decision to extend the working age. Imagine clocking in at your job not just until you're 60 or 65, but until the age of 70. That's right, by 2030, Singaporeans are expected to remain in the workforce until they hit the big 7-0. Why this shift, and what does it mean for you, whether you're just starting your career or eyeing the horizon of retirement? Stick around as we break down the details and implications of this groundbreaking move. In the not-so-distant future, starting from 2026, there will be a significant shift in the retirement landscape. The metaphorical time when you can finally hang up your work boots and enjoy the fruits of your labor is being postponed. The retirement age is set to increase to 64 years old. Yes, you read that correctly. But that's not all. By the year 2030, the retirement age will be pushed even further to 65 years old. But the changes don't stop there. The age for reemployment is also set to rise. In 2026, it will reach 69 years old, and by 2030, it will hit the 70 year mark. What does this mean for you? Well, it means that your employer is obligated to offer you the opportunity to continue working until you reach these ages, assuming you are willing and able to do so. You might be wondering why these changes are taking place. The answer lies in our increasing life expectancy. Thanks to advancements in healthcare, we are living longer, healthier lives. This is great news for us as individuals, but it also presents a challenge for countries like Singapore, where the manpower situation is tight. By raising the retirement and reemployment ages, the aim is to keep experienced seniors in the workforce for a longer period. This allows them to continue contributing their valuable skills and wisdom. It's a win-win situation. Seniors get to stay active and engaged, while the country benefits from their expertise and experience. So, while the game might be changing, it's changing in a way that benefits everyone. Here's an important detail to note qualifying for reemployment isn't as simple as reaching the new retirement age. There are certain criteria that you need to meet. First and foremost, you should be performing well in your current role. In other words, you need to be doing a stellar job. Additionally, you should be in good health, or as the saying goes, fit as a fiddle. If you joined the company after the age of 55, there's another requirement. You need to have been with the company for at least two years by the time you reach the new retirement age. This is to ensure that you have had enough time to demonstrate your value to the company. When you do get reemployed, it's typically on a yearly contract. This contract can be renewed every year, giving both you and your employer flexibility and the opportunity to reassess the situation on a regular basis. It's important to note that these changes didn't happen overnight. The government first proposed this idea back in 2019. They carefully planned it out step by step to give companies ample time to adapt. The first move was made in July 2022, and with this upcoming change, they're encouraging employers to think ahead. One key aspect that employers are being nudged to consider is upskilling their seasoned employees. With the increase in retirement and reemployment ages, it's crucial that older employees remain sharp and relevant in the ever evolving workplace. Upskilling, or learning new skills, is a great way for them to do this. It not only benefits the employees themselves, but also the companies they work for and the economy as a whole. So, while these changes may seem daunting at first, they're designed with the best interests of everyone in mind. Before you start worrying, let's clear up a common misconception. The changes in retirement and reemployment ages do not affect your Central Provident Fund, CPF, withdrawal or payout ages. These remain unchanged. So, you can still look forward to receiving your CPF savings as planned. Now, let's shift gears a bit and talk about something equally important, the Career Conversion Program. This program is designed to help individuals who are considering a career switch or mature workers who are finding it challenging to secure employment. The good news is that this program is getting a significant boost. The salary support cap, which is the maximum amount of salary that the program will cover, is set to increase. For those who are seasoned in their field or have been out of the workforce for a while, the cap is jumping to $7,500 a month. For others, the cap is rising to $5,000 a month. This increase in support is a significant step towards making career transitions more manageable. The idea behind this increase is to make it easier for individuals to pivot into new roles or industries. The program can cover up to 90% of the monthly salary for those who need it most. 
This means that if you've been thinking about making a career switch, now might be the perfect time. With this increased support, you can focus on acquiring new skills and adapting to your new role, rather than worrying about financial stability. In addition to the changes in retirement and reemployment ages, the Manpower Minister is introducing a new initiative. This initiative aims to expand the career conversion program to not only assist those facing redundancy, but also to help current employees prepare for new roles within their companies. This is a strategic move that encourages employers to be proactive and forward-thinking in how they equip their teams with the necessary skills for future growth. This initiative is part of Singapore's broader strategy to prepare its workforce for the long haul. The goal is to ensure that everyone, regardless of age, is ready and able to contribute meaningfully to the workforce. This approach recognizes and values the experience and wisdom that comes with age, while also acknowledging the importance of staying relevant in an ever-evolving job market. Upskilling and career shifts are becoming increasingly important in today's dynamic work environment. By providing support for these transitions, the government is helping individuals adapt to new roles and industries. This not only benefits the individuals themselves, but also contributes to the overall growth and competitiveness of the economy. In essence, these changes reflect a shift in mindset. Rather than viewing age as a barrier, it's seen as an asset. Experience and wisdom are valued, and there's an understanding that with the right support and opportunities, older workers can continue to play a significant role in the workforce. At the same time, there's a recognition that staying relevant requires continuous learning and adaptation. Hence, the emphasis on upskilling and career shifts. So, while the journey may be long, the destination is clear. Singapore is committed to creating a workforce that's inclusive, adaptable, and ready for the future. And with these changes, it's taking significant steps towards that goal. And there you have it, folks, an in-depth look at Singapore's bold move to extend the retirement age to 70. It's clear that this initiative isn't just about keeping our seniors in the workforce, it's about valuing their contribution and tapping into their wealth of experience for the betterment of our economy and society. Whether you're a young professional or a seasoned veteran in your field, this change is set to impact us all. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you see yourself working till 70? What challenges and opportunities do you anticipate with these changes? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and let's get the conversation going. If you found this analysis helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to The Investing Iguana for more insights into Singapore's financial landscape. Until next time, keep investing smart and stay savvy, my friends.